Today we're going to be talking about uh, a topic that's a little different than what we've been doing up to this point. We're going to be talking about what are called statically indeterminate structures. Statically indeterminate structures. And as the name might suggest, it means that statics alone doesn't yield enough equations to determine the behavior of the structure. In other words, we're going to have to introduce some additional equations uh, based on internal deformations in order to get enough equations to solve for the reaction forces in the structure. Remember, with statics, you only have uh, a few equations that you can use uh, in terms of sums of moments and then sums of forces in the x and y direction. And you can imagine that that may not be enough equations for every case that you may encounter. So let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Let's say we have a setup like this. where this is now going to be fixed on the end here. Okay. And we're going to apply a load P1 up here and a load P2 here. So if we were to cut this away and look at the free body diagram, we would end up with a reaction there. That we This would be the unknown, the reaction. We could almost write an identical structure looks like this, okay. where now, again, it's going to be a load P here. But imagine, instead of being free at the top, it is also fixed. So now there's two reactions. There's reaction uh, one up here, that's unknown, and reaction two down here that's unknown. Okay, so let's call this problem one and problem two. Okay, so for problem one, to solve for the unknown reaction, all we do is sum the forces in the y direction and set it equal to zero. So we have, in this case, R, which is our unknown, minus P2 minus P1 is equal to zero, and then we can just simply solve for R equal to P2 plus P1, okay? This is statically determinate because we were able to solve for all of the reaction forces through statics, okay? But let's take a look at problem two. In this case, we have, if we sum the forces in the y direction, which is the only equation that we have in this case available to us, we have R2 um, let's see R2 minus R1 minus P is equal to zero. But the problem is, is we have two unknowns and only one equation. Okay, so this is indeterminate we need another equation or else we can't determine how R2 and R1 are related to one another or what their value is given a load P. This is a simple example that demonstrates that only kind of in very simple scenarios are you statically determinate. Actually, most structures are statically indeterminate, in fact. Okay, so let's, let's now talk about how you deal with this in a very simple setting. Let's say you have a problem where you've got a bar that's going to be fixed at both ends, similar to what we just looked at. There's going to be some load P that's applied. Okay, this is distance A, let's say, and let's say this is distance B. Okay. And then we have a total length L here. Okay, let's so say this is point A, this is going to be point B, and this will be point C. 
All right. Now, if we cut this out and we create a free body diagram, we have our bar. We have some reaction at A that's unknown, some reaction at B that's unknown, and the supplied load, P, here. So the question then is, is well, we don't have, no, we only, the only equation from statics we have is we can sum the forces in the y direction, but that's clearly not enough because we have two unknowns. And so we need to, we need somehow to know figure out what the internal forces are in these two uh, these two subsections. Okay. So let's see if we can find another equation that makes sense. Okay. So we begin with st our standard procedures from statics. So we'll sum the forces in the y direction and set them equal to zero. What that will give us is that the reaction at B, um, oh, let's change the reaction at B plus the reaction at A minus P should be equal to zero. So that's one equation. And now we need another equation. So we're going to introduce what's called a compatibility equation. Compatibility equation. And what we're going to try and figure out is what the internal deformations, is there some relationship between the internal deformations that will give us another equation. Now, since this is, notice that this is, has a fixed support on the bottom and the top, what do we know about the total elongation between the top and the bottom? Well, because it's fixed, it better be zero. Okay, better be zero. This is a, a type of compatibility equation. A compatibility equation essentially is telling us something about the, the internal deformations of the problem. And we know that delta AC is going to be delta AB plus delta BC. And so now we can introduce our internal, we can introduce our equations here that we just learned. Okay, so we can introduce our force displacement relationships. So delta AB is equal to the reaction at A times distance A over EA. Okay. Delta BC equal to the negative of the reaction at B. B over E A. Okay. So therefore, delta A C is equal to the reaction at A times A. A minus reaction B, B over EA. Now you might be wondering where did this minus sign come from? Uh, by convention, notice how we, we set up our forces here. We can see that this here is in tension, and this here is going to be in compression. And in terms of deformations, we, 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 tension is a positive sign and compression is a minus sign, which is why there's a minus right there. Okay, so now we have two equations. Notice now what's happened is we have um, this equation here, right, from statics. 
that has both of our unknowns in it. But look at this. We have the second equation, which should be equal to zero, by the way. I forgot to put that because of this here. We have the second equation here, right, which also has both unknowns in it. So we have two equations and two unknowns. Okay, so the last step then is solve the system of equations. Okay, so our two equations are RB plus RA minus P is equal to zero, and RA a over e a minus r b b over e a is equal to zero. And so you just solve those two equations for those two unknowns.